is the Bill of Rights. These are the first 10 amendments that were added to the U.S. Constitution after it was ratified in 1789. These rights are protected under federal law, which means everything we're talking about today applies in all 50 states. There are three amendments in particular that protect your rights during police encounters. The Fourth Amendment states that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The Fifth Amendment states that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. During a police encounter, the smartest way to take the Fifth is just to keep your mouth shut, because you always have the right to remain silent. We'll talk in a minute about how this works. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. So if the police interrogate or arrest you, asking for a lawyer is a good way to assert your right to remain silent. Lawyer up. That's right. Regardless of what you have seen on TV, police don't usually have to read you your rights, even if you're arrested. So it's up to you to make sure that you understand the law and make smart choices. If police flag you down, pull over immediately, turn off your car, and place your hands on the wheel. The police like to see your hands for their own safety, so wait until they request your paperwork before reaching for it. At night, it's also a good idea to turn on the interior light so that the officer can see you're not armed. Darren, do you see any ways you could have handled yourself better? Good evening, officer. How's it going? Did you know you were swerving between lanes? No, officer. Let me see your license and registration. Sure. My license. Here's my registration. Now, Darren, we've had some problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines, are you? No, sir. I didn't think so. So you don't mind if I take a look, do you? Officer, I know you're just doing your job. I don't have any guns or whatever, but I don't consent to searches. Perfect. Rule number three, you have the right to refuse searches. This comes directly from the Fourth Amendment. For your Fourth Amendment protection to legally apply, you must be prepared to clearly state your refusal under pressure. Everyone repeat after me. I don't consent to searches. I don't consent to searches. The officers can't hear you, so say it again. I don't consent to searches. One more time. I don't consent to searches. You a law student or something? So if I show that I know the rules, he might think I'm a law student. Or maybe I got big legal connections. Perhaps. But don't get carried away by saying stuff like, I know my rights, my Get out of my face, I'm going to sue you. Never tell the officer you know your rights. Show the officer you know your rights by asserting them calmly. You seem nervous. Is there anything in this car I need to know about? No, officer. All right, please step out of the vehicle. Police may legally order you out of your vehicle, so you should comply. Walk back here with me. Stand right here for me. Now, you got two choices. You can make this better or worse for yourself. Now, if you cooperate, it's going to make things a lot easier on you. Beware you that the police I'm may saying. legally lie to you, so never let false threats or promises trick you into waiving your rights. Now, if you don't, I'm gonna call up a K-9 unit and those dogs are gonna rip apart your car and they're gonna find what you're hiding. So what's it gonna be? Refusing a search request is not evidence of guilt and doesn't give the officer the legal right to search or detain you. Don't get tricked. Unless you're detained or arrested, you may terminate the encounter at any time, but don't wait for the officer to dismiss you. Simply ask if you're free to go.
there and those dogs are going to rip apart your car and they're going to find what you're hiding. Like I said, what's it going to be? Officer, are you detaining me or am I free to go? Good. This line can help withdraw you from an encounter. Saying you want to leave establishes that the encounter is not voluntary, which could help you later if you end up in court. Let's practice that line. Everyone repeat after me. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? One more time. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? All right. You want to play it like that? You want to bump it up to the next level? Fine. You stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Asserting your rights won't make the police love you, but it might make them extra cautious about violating your rights. Darren, this is a citation for excessive lane changing. Take care of that as soon as possible. Thank you, officer. I understand refusing a search doesn't make me guilty, but if I'm doing nothing wrong, why don't I just let the police search me and get it done with? You have the right to let police search you. You also have the right to refuse. The choice is yours. But there are some reasons to think carefully about this. The officer isn't your butler. Searches can get real messy. If they damage anything, you might not be compensated because you agreed to the search. Besides, you never know for sure what a careless person, relative, friend, previous owner might have left in your car at some point. If the police find any illegal items after you consent to a search request, you can be arrested even if you had nothing to do with it. You have the right to Consenting to a search request automatically makes the search legal in the eyes of the law. And the Fourth Amendment doesn't require officers to tell you about your right to refuse. So if you're pulled over, don't try to figure out whether or not the officer has probable cause to legally search you. You always have the right to refuse searches. I don't consent to searches. But they're going to search us anyway. Sometimes they will, but saying no isn't just about stopping the search. It might stop the search or it might not. Cross your legs. The point is that refusing the search could help you later if you end up in court. If the police search you without consent, your lawyer can challenge that. As your attorney, I'd be much more likely to win your case if you said no to the search. If I do not consent, when are police allowed to search my car? You mentioned probable cause. <laughs> what does that mean? Probable cause means police must have clear facts or evidence to believe you're involved in criminal activity. In other words, an officer's hunch without evidence of illegal activity is not enough to search or arrest you. But it doesn't take much. Most avoidable police searches happen not because police have probable cause. They happen because people get tricked or intimidated into consenting. So an expired registration isn't probable cause to search my car? No, it's not. But you still got to be careful. Courts are eager to uphold police searches, so something suspicious about you or your car could be considered probable cause. I'm not the kind of guy to tell you how you should express yourself. Expressing yourself is one thing, but exposing yourself to police by being a public nuisance is ignorant. Rule number six, don't expose yourself. Mr. Murphy, I appreciate you being here today talking about constitutional rights and all. But in my hood, police don't care about nobody's right. They do whatever they want. Tell us more. The other day, I was leaving my building on my way to work. Uh-huh. Ahorita, yeah. En 30 minutos llego. A las 5 dentro, chequeé el sketch. Sumo. Ahí te caigo. No, no voy a llegar tarde. Voy, voy. OK, va. You. Let me see your hands. Put him on the car. Spread. Where's the 